Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. Thank you for joining us for our live stream. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Once again, good morning and thank you for joining us. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day and we thank you for the opportunity to gather together, though we are separated by distance, to worship you, to take time out of our busy schedules, to rest, to hear your word and to be nourished by you. We pray, Lord, as we worship, that you would remind us that you are always with us. You sustain us, you inspire us, and you accompany us. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. A reading from Psalm 26. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. And I've seen come once again to me. I will draw near to you. I will draw near to you. It's better is a one day in your courts. Better is a one day in your house. Better is a one day in your courts. Thousands elsewhere. 
Better is a one day in your courts. Better is a one day in your house. Better is a one day in your courts. Thousands elsewhere. Thousands elsewhere. The good news for this morning comes from Matthew's Gospel. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Good morning, boys and girls and everybody watching at home. Uh, I'm glad that we can be together this way. I hope that you've had a great week, and I hope that you've had a great morning so far. So this morning, I was thinking about all the different choices that we make. And I'm wondering if you could think for a minute about all the choices you've made already this morning. Now, I realize that it's still kind of early, and so you might not think that you've made many choices, but you really have. Think about it for a second. When you got up this morning and got out of bed, did you make your bed before you left your room, or did you just sort of leave it where it was? And then, if you've eaten something already today, what did you choose to eat? Maybe that choice was made for you. What did you choose to have for breakfast? What else have you done this morning? Did you watch TV? If you did, then you probably chose a program or a TV show to watch. We make all kinds of choices all the time. In our Bible story for today, Jesus chooses to tell his friends, his disciples, about what's going to happen to him. He chooses to tell them that he must go to a place called Jerusalem, and that when he's there, he will face the cross, and he will die, and three days later, he will rise again. After hearing this, one of his disciples, Peter, he doesn't like what he hears at all. And so he speaks up, and he encourages Jesus to choose something else. He says, this must never happen to you. He wants Jesus to choose a different path, one that doesn't include the cross. In life, we make lots and lots of choices. Some of those choices are pretty easy, like what we'll have for breakfast or what we might watch on TV. Other choices are a little trickier, like whether or not to do our schoolwork or go out and play. But we make lots and lots of choices every day. When it came to Jesus going to the cross, by the way, that wasn't a choice. If we listen to the lesson, he says that he must do this. He doesn't have to like it, but it is part of what he has to do. That choice was made for him. There are choices like this in our lives as well. Sometimes people in our lives choose for us. Like, for example, maybe this morning you said that you'd like to choose a piece of birthday cake for breakfast. Or maybe mom or dad or somebody else in your life said, no, 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 you can't have that for breakfast. That's not a good breakfast. And they chose something else for you. Sometimes choices are made for us, and the people who make those choices do that because they love us. It's the same with the story of Jesus. God chose to come to our world in the person of Jesus. God chose to have Jesus tell us all kinds of things, especially about how God loves everyone. And again, the choice was made for Jesus to go to Jerusalem, to carry the cross, to die, and to be raised again. God made this choice because God loves us. You make all kinds of choices every single day. And like I said, some of those choices are easy and others are trickier, others are harder. The next time you face a choice that's tricky or one that's hard, 
I want you to remember that God is with you to help you make that choice. And God has put all kinds of people in your life, moms and dads, brothers and sisters, grandparents and friends, that are always there to listen and to help you make the trickier choices. So the next time you have a tough choice to make, remember, Jesus made some tough choices as well, and God is with you when you choose. Let's have a prayer together. Dear Jesus, thank you for being with us when we have to choose one thing over another. Help us to make good choices every day. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for being a part of our lives every day. And we thank you, Lord, for being a God who guides us, who leads us. We thank you for speaking to us and pointing us in the direction that you would have us go. Help us, Lord, each day, not just as we worship you, but as we go about our daily lives, to pay attention, to be in contact with you, and to look for the places in our world where you are pointing us. And help us, Lord, to travel where you would lead. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So I was thinking about, uh, I was thinking this week about two things that I use all the time, and maybe you use these things as well. I'm thinking about spell check and autocorrect. And you probably know what these are. Spell check is that function on my computer that when I'm typing something, whether it's an email or a sermon, alerts me to the fact that I have spelled something wrong. If I mistype a word, the computer un underlines it with this squiggly red line, letting me know that something isn't quite right. Autocorrect is sort of like this. It's sort of like spell check, but it's a little different. Autocorrect, like spell check, notices when I have mistyped something, but instead of just letting me know, it automatically corrects to the word that it thinks I wanted to type. This happens all the time on my phone when I'm typing a text. These tools are really similar in that they're paying attention to what I'm writing and working to make corrections to potential problems, but they're different in how they do that. In our gospel lesson for today, Jesus, I think, is more like spell check, and Peter is sort of like autocorrect. Here's what I mean. When Jesus tells his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering and die and rise again, Peter's autocorrect function kicks in he immediately sees something wrong with all of this, and he jumps into action. Taking Jesus aside, he corrects him. This must never happen to you, he says. Having just proclaimed that Jesus is the Messiah, God's anointed Savior, he sees a real problem with Jesus telling him that this Messiah must suffer and die, and he auto-corrects him, or at least he tries to. Jesus, on the other hand, to me, is more like spell check. Spell check doesn't correct my misspelled words for me. When I accidentally type something incorrectly, spell check simply underlines it with that squiggly red line, showing me that something isn't quite right. But then it leaves it up to me to change it. To me, Jesus is more like this. Our lesson for today tells us that Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and experience suffering and carry the cross and give his life. Jesus shows us that there is something wrong in the world. In telling his disciples about the cross and his own death and resurrection, he shows them what God is going to do about it. If I'm being honest with you, I like spell check better than autocorrect because sometimes autocorrect just gets it wrong. It happens all the time to me. I might mean to type the word test into a text, but it autocorrects to year. And then when I go to retype it, it incorrectly autocorrects that to rest. That's a real example from a text that I sent this week, and it was aggravating. My phone, doing its best, tried to automatically correct my mistakes, and it got it wrong, twice, and it was annoying. I think Jesus was annoyed when Peter tried to auto-correct him. You can hear it in his voice and his words from our lesson for today. God might like spell check better, too. Throughout the story of Jesus and the story of the whole Bible, God is at work pointing out what's not quite right in our world and then inviting us to do something about it. In some ways, it would be great if God were more like autocorrect, seeing things that aren't quite right and just making changes immediately. But when I think about it, autocorrect is one-sided, and our God is, and always has been, more interested in relationships. Spellcheck points to a problem and invites us to take a look at it as well, and then see what we might do about it. This, to me, is what God is like. 
I think I hear this not just in Jesus' announcement that he must go to Jerusalem and carry the cross and experience death and rise again, but also in his invitation, his call for everyone who follows him to go to the cross as well, to take it up and bear it, to lose our own lives and his, to die and rise with him. Lord knows there are a lot of places in our world today that aren't quite right. And I believe that God is pointing us to those places each day, not in an autocorrect sort of way that automatically sets things right, but more like spell check, underlining and highlighting places for God's people to begin paying attention, reviewing, seeing what needs to be changed, and then, with God's help, working to make change, making things better. I used spell check countless times in preparing this sermon, and it works. God's version of spell check works too. All we need to do is to begin to pay attention to where God is pointing and see what God might invite us to do with it, all with God's help. In Jesus' name, amen. Our song of the day today uh, is a medley of the hymn, Let Us Ever Walk With Jesus profound hymn of our Lutheran tradition that invites us to uh, meditate on the words of Christ, to take up our cross and follow him. On the one hand, that's uh, a sad thing is the cross leads to death, and yet as this hymn reminds us uh, that it is through the cross that we find that death is just a gateway to eternal life. And then following the, the hymn, uh, we'll sing a uh, contemporary song, I Will Follow, the chorus of which has a similar uh, call for discipleship. Let us ever walk with Jesus, follow his example pure. Through a world that would deceive us and to sin our spirits low. Onward in his footsteps treading travelers here our home above. Full of faith and hope and love, let us to our Savior's bidding, faithful Lord with me. Abide, I shall follow where you guide. Let us suffer here with Jesus and with patience bear our cross. Joy will follow all our sadness. Where he is, there is no loss. Though today we sow no laughter, we shall reap celestial joy. All these comforts that annoy shall give way to mirth hereafter. Jesus, here I share your woe. Help me there your joy to Let us gladly die with Jesus, since by death he conquered death. That to free we from destruction, give to us immortal bread. Let us mortify all passion that would lead us into sin, and the grave that shuts us in shall but prove the gate of heaven jesus here with you i die there to live with you on high. let us also live with jesus he has risen from that to life we may awaken. Jesus, you are now our head. We are your own living members. Where you live, there we shall be in your presence. 
presence constantly, living there with you forever. Jesus, let me faithful be, life eternal grant to me. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. And you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Whom you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. In this life I lose, I will follow you. I will follow you. I will follow you. As we continue to worship, we pray together. You can respond to each prayer. I will say, Lord, in your mercy at the close of each petition, and you're welcome to reply, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of faithfulness, you bid your people to follow Jesus. Set the mind of your church on divine things. Grant us trust in you that we lose our lives for the sake of Christ and thereby discover joy in life through him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that is in it. Heal your creation and give us eyes to see the world as you do. As the seasons change, pattern the rhythm of our lives in harmony with all creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all nations, you call us to live peaceably with all. Give us ears to hear one another, even those we name as enemies. Fill all leaders with mercy and understanding that they advocate and genuinely care for those who are poor and most vulnerable in their communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of salvation, you promise to deliver us. Give those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and love. Accompany those who are uncertain. Raise the spirits of those who are despairing and heal the sick, especially those that are known to us and those on St. James' prayer list. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for love, and this day we celebrate the love that Becca and Bobby have found in one another. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity yesterday for their family to gather as they, as they were united in marriage. And we pray, Lord, that you would continue to bless them as they celebrate this weekend and continue to nourish the love that they have found in one another, that it might grow over the days, months, and years to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. There are just a few congregational announcements I'd like to share with you this morning. Once again, I want to thank Rob and Steve for all their help in getting our live stream up and running and making it work so well. Our mission of the month, this is the last Sunday of August, so it's the last Sunday for our mission of the month, which is Camp Calumet. You can find out more at calumet.org. As you know, their resident camp for kids has been canceled for the summer, so this has a really big impact on all that they do up there. So if you are able to make a donation, I would encourage you to do that. I wanna thank everybody who's made donations so far. You can contribute directly through the Calumet website or through St. James' website. 
And again, thank you to everyone who made donations to St. James this week, whether you mailed in your contribution, whether it was a direct deposit or a bill pay situation, and those of you who used the donate button on our website. website you can find that at stjames-ri.org on the donate page. And again, thank you to everyone who contributed. Our building will remain closed, but you're welcome to contact me. Be, uh, you can call me, you can text me, you can email, you can message me on Facebook, all of the normal ways. All of that contact information, by the way, is included in our weekly e-newsletter that comes out every Friday from St. James. Steve is going to unmute everyone after the Zoom wraps up and we'll let you know about that. You're welcome to stick around and chat with each other for as long as you like. One additional announcement, uh, over the last couple of weeks, Loaves and Fishes of Rhode Island has resumed activity. Uh, like many things, it is a new normal as they ease back into finding ways to share what we have with those who are in need. The way this is working now is that we're prepackaging a lot of food. I think George and John brought over 100 uh, the equivalent of a hundred different meals, drinks, personal care items, uh, some clothing, and those things are delivered to places like Crossroads or the Matthewson, Matthewson Street Methodist Church in Providence. Uh, I wanted to thank John and George and everyone who's involved in that and just let all of you know that we are working back into some of our outreach programs, that those things are coming back to life, uh, albeit in a new way. Um, and we really, really appreciate the work that everyone is putting into those things. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have gathered us. You have nourished us with your word, and now you send us. You send us back into the world. And as we depart from worship with our hearts filled with song, raising our voices and looking ahead to a new week, we pray that you would remind us that you are with us. You are not there to automatically correct us, but you are there to point us in your direction and invite us to follow you. Just as Jesus carried the cross, you invite, to, you invite us to be people who bear the cross in your world. And so we pray, Lord, that you would bless us this week with opportunities to serve, with opportunities to make a difference in your world, with opportunities to be your people. And as we go, Lord, we know, we are confident that you will bless us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Such love and sorrow meet, for thorns compose so rich a crown. Oh, the wonderful cross, oh, the wonderful cross bids me come and die and find that I may truly live. Oh, the wonderful cross. Oh, the wonderful cross, all who gather here by grace draw near and blessed name. Where the whole realm of nature mind, that were an offering far too small, the so My soul, my life, my all. Oh, the wonderful cross. Oh, the wonderful cross. It's me come and die and find that I may truly live. Oh, the wonderful cross. Oh, the 
Once again, thank you all for joining us for worship this week. You can find us right here next week, 9 a.m., with our live stream, either via Zoom or Facebook Live. I hope that you all have a tremendous week. Steve will unmute those of you who are worshiping via Zoom, and you're welcome to stick around and, and hang out and talk with one another for as long as you like. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks to, be to God. God.